to talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! You stupid bitch, you <laughs> filthy... Welcome back to Flyover State of Fear. I got my main boy, Brian. How you doing, baby? Oh, man, you know, I'm doing good. I'm ready. I'm hot. You're ready? You're ready? Mm. You're ready to talk underrated? Another underrated Scorsese? Is that what this is? Are we Are we not calling this an underrated Scorsese? Mm. All right, we'll save that. We'll park and lot that. Let's table that. Let's, Let's table, table this that. discussion for later in the show. You clicked on the link or whatever. You know we're talking about 1991's Cape Fear remake. Um, but in the meantime, Brian, how have you been? You know, same old, same old. Same old shit, yeah. Uh, you know, this is going to drop around or shortly after uh, St. Paddy's Day. Yeah. And we always talk about stuff we've been watching. And I got the complete... Leprechaun collection on Blu-ray. Broke down and bought it. I used to have the DVD of just the first three. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to spend the whatever it was, $18, and get the six, seven movie, actually, because it also has the, the Hornswoggle the one. one with Hornswoggle in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I I'd never, I'd never seen the franchise past three. So uh, my son and I have been indulging in a little I... Leprechaun leading up to the holiday here. I, um... I've seen, God, I've seen them sporadically. Like, I've seen the first one. I don't think I've seen two. But then I've seen all, like, the or, like, I should say all. I've seen the two hood the two hood ones mm-hmm. and Space. Okay. Uh, well, like, all so that. I, I had seen the first three, like I said. And uh, the first one is maybe the worst of those three. It's quite bad. It has Jennifer Aniston, and it's quite bad. Um, two is, eh, three is probably the best one of those three. It's the Las Vegas one mm. and it's got the girl from Chainsaw 2 and it's got some other, uh, you know, fun actors in it and stuff. But then, uh, I had never seen, so I'm watching space and space is real bad. Oh man, it's cheap. Everything looks cheap and bad. It's I'm, not a Jason X. It's not fun. No, it's, it's worse. Bad. It's, it's way not, worse. It's like I love a, Jason. Jason X is great. It's um, a truly, um, it's a it's a bad movie. Yeah. Um, and then also um, in the hood, Leprechaun in the hood, which is part, uh, part five, also quite bad, very cheap, very like, oof, bad writing, bad acting. Well, Even ice T who is like in between surviving the game and, and uh, law and order at this point in his career, but like not a new, not, you know, not inexperienced, terrible in it. Terrible. Oh, they're both bad. I mean, I think they, I now think I'm going to say this right now. Angela Bassett up here briefly in that. No, no, that would have been awesome. Though. No, no, there's oh Dion. No, I'm sorry. Dion Warwick pops up in, <laughs> in, uh, um, in, I'm going to tell you this. I was ready to write the whole thing off. And I think hot take Leprechaun back to the hood is the best movie in the franchise. Um, Part six. It's got, it almost feels like a real movie. Like it looks like, like the budget. I don't know if they like got a little more budget or they just used it better, but it looks, it looks a lot better. Um, it's got better acting in it's it. Sli- it's a little slicker too. Like I, I've yes, seen, exactly. I've seen both. I'm just more like mixing. a real movie. It's a little, but like, like I said, this is not to say that I'm like highly recommending. This is still a trash franchise. And if it weren't for my love of Warwick Davis, I wouldn't even give the thing a t- the time of day. I it's think they're bottom all, tier, very I think they're all very surface on, on the surface, uh, fun, like beer movies in the sense of like throw it on, laugh at them. You can watch them with a pal. Uh, by watching, I mean like barely watch. Be like, oh, that's fucking bad. Yeah, that's kind of how me and Harrison have been watching them. Like, like Ooh, I, man, this, but then we got the pleasure of watching Back to the Hood and being like, you know what? This is a step up. Yeah, this is better. I, I feel bad 
I feel bad if someone went to me and like I intently watched all six and I like paid attention and like ooh ooh I'm you, here to discuss lore with yeah you. like no I'm okay um, don't do it don't do I remember lore. the first time I ever watched um, a a video live stream watch along was back when with pre you and I knowing each other screen junkies screen right? junkies yeah. on break.com. Yeah, they before did even a, before SJ Plus or anything like that. They did a live stream. I was also watching. It was that. like Monday was on it, and some of those other people. Yeah, all the yeah all the people. And they were like, it was like drinking. I remember I was off of work. I must have been, I had been I was a I was uh, just I got home late, so I had no St. Patrick's Day plans. I was like, I was like twenty four or something. Oh yeah, shit. yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, whatever, I'll do this. I remember I was like, I'll have some beers sitting in, in, in my parents' house in this chair watching. And, like, this is a it, fun time. And I, and I remember, too, it's like watching basically in the middle of the day because it, it went because they're, in, you know, it like aired. At like... Yeah, they were going to space. And it was uh, the big, like, hashtag joke was uh, it was hashtag gold member and then, like, dick birth or something like that. Like, those were two of, like, trigger words where it was like, if you see us, say those things. I won't know you're cool. That's hilarious. Anyway, that is, I'll never not think of that specific thing with uh, at least space. Because space is, um, space has a uh, Joanna man in it. Has, yeah, uh, absolutely it does. And, um, I accidentally watched two Joanna man movies in the same night. Oh, did you watch uh, Friday the 13th? No, no, it was a different, and now now you're going to hold me to it. I'm going to have to look it up and figure out which one it was. <laughs> this is this is why I need you this to is, get, It like, wasn't uh, memorable enough for me to actually remember. This is why I, I need you to get on Letterboxd and not your Twitter thread of, like, now watching, because at least it's, like, logged. No, I hate Letterbox <laughs> for no reason. I'm just... I'm just no, no, you should. It's it, I think it's making us film fans worse, but I love it. Um, uh -huh. Well, anyway, I accidentally watched two Juana Man movies in one night, That's and it funny. was weird. I was like, that guy again? Ingo, uh, Nunez, in English, Miguel, Miguel Nunez, yeah. Miguel exactly. Nunez. Um, ooh, yeah, no, baby, I know myself. Ooh, baby. Uh, <laughs> man. Nope, I, yeah, I, 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 I really haven't picked up much. I mean, we watched, uh, after we covered Nightmare, I watched, like, Nightmare 5. I think my wife is watching Dream uh, Dream Master right now. Yeah, like I was like, all right, this is on. But other than that, not 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 too much committed. Still on my Master Chef train, and when I'm not Master Chef, and I'm I'm just going to the movies. Yeah, I'm in the hardcore Sopranos mode too. I've been on like a power rewatch. Yeah, that's like... respectable though. I'm watching a reality TV show. I'm like, ooh, Eggs Benedict, you really fucked that one up. <laughs> uh, no, I uh. I, I did see Dune 2. I know that's not horror, but it is viscerally, like, 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 looks so amazing, and there are some moments in it, and, uh, uh, I did love just the, my favorite part of it was the black and white, but not, like, just the color removed out of the frame shots. Yeah, yeah, I like the, uh, everybody's mentioned it, but, like, the ink blot fireworks, that was, mm -hmm. that's a cool effect that I'd never really seen before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, no, I actually, I liked it. I saw Dune 2 also. It was great. Uh, I was a big fan. I think it moves a little better than the first part. It has such um, a good pace to it for yeah. how long it is. Yeah, it was very good. Um, it's And it's like a shame that we won't get more Austin Butler because he was really excellent. You know, that's like... Yeah. Yeah, that it, was... Um, yeah. Is what it is I'm kinda, there. Can I, can I say that I'm a little embarrassed, but I kind of want to see the... Uh, Austin Butler, Tom Hardy, motorcycle guy movie. I don't is think that's it, embarrassing. No, okay. I, want, good, I, I, think, I, I think they're good actors. I couldn't tell if that was an embarrassing movie to look to want to see. <laughs> I think it's a weird one to be like. You know what I'm really looking forward to, but yeah. I don't blame you. Um, yeah, I, I'm on board. So yeah. you have my stamp of approval to. Uh, I haven't, you know, I mean. Uh, I didn't see Elvis. I'm not interested in Elvis, but I'm not. I'm not like anti Austin Butler. Shockingly, I really liked it. It's just that Baz Luhrmann style filmmaking was, if I remember correctly, it was like, yeah, too much. Like if you you did the same performances and just didn't have the like it never. I think my criticism when we watched it last year was like it never took a minute to let it self breathe or being like, 
process anyone's like character. I just like, oh, no, no. I was like, yeah, oh, okay, we don't need to do this for everything, Baz, but people love it. Um, but um, so I'll just jump right, we'll just jump right into it. So we're talking Cape Fear 91 today. Brian and I were talking not too long ago that this is a movie we both wanted, wanted to revisit. I, I've always really enjoyed this movie. I think it's a, I've always thought it's a great, it's always reminded me of like one of those great USA network dad movies. Good I thriller. That. Yeah. I Good see thriller. That. That's how I've always related to it. It feels I I could, yeah, I, I get that vibe from it. Um, yeah, weirdly, uh, I only ever saw this movie like one time and it was kind of, uh, it was right around the time it came out. It was actually kind of a forbidden half watch because mm. I was staying at a hotel with my dad and I was actually supposed to be sleeping, but I was mm. kind of like turned over and like watching Cape Fear. Sure. It's a- and uh, so I didn't really remember that much about it. And then, uh, of course, I had the Simpsons episode. The that's, Sergeant, a which big, is like, that's a big cloud, I think, over. Well, you realize that this was. At, at the t- it doesn't feel that way now. Like I don't think it's remembered this way. But at the time it came out, it was a very big deal. Uh, parodies on Seinfeld, parodies on The Simpsons, mm-hmm. parodies on uh, you know lots of stuff. Um, ben Stiller show at the time did a big a whole bit on it. This movie was like, really parodied, especially with the, yeah. the the score and then De Niro's stuff. Well, no, I that that literally episode called Cape Fear. Oh yeah. Uh, and you I assume that you never saw the original. I've never seen the original. No, I've never seen the original either. And I wanted to ask, cause that's like, I, I, I didn't want to taint my viewing by watching the original, but then there are some stylistic choices that he makes in this that I feel like are possibly references to I, stuff from the original. I think cause they a feel a little like old timey or a little out of place, well, you know? So the original, um, like I, I know way too much about Martin Scorsese. All right. Um, is one of his like favorite older Hollywood films. Um, and he didn't, he was like, he didn't really want to make this, but it's, it's known as like the famous Spielberg Scorsese swap. Spielberg was attached to make this movie and he wanted to go make Schindler's list. And he essentially said, Hey, Hey, uh, Marty, I think you're more suited to make this movie than I am. With a little con- and, he, and, he, and this is the way Scorsese worked for years and years. It was the I get to you do one for me, I do one, one for, for me, you. One for them. Yeah, I get so it. this this I believe was still tied into hey, you owe us for Last Temptation of the Christ. Um, do can you you know do this movie, and 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 then they gave him like Casino afterwards. Yeah, and I could see that, like, that does, I mean, I get that he enjoys the original, but I that also makes sense that there's a little bit of a higher gun vibe to this mm-hmm. one. Oh, because it's, it's very much, I mean, there's some, like, for, like, a big studio movie, and it is, yeah. there oh, are yeah. some artsy, there's some, like, artsy shots and choices and things like that, yeah. but it's his most commercial, at the time at least, commercially sty- commercially hired gun I'm making this movie to fund my other movies, and I'm going to right. give it the justice. Well, that this I would feel. have been right after Goodfellas, right? Right this after is the Goodfellas. next movie, this is, yeah. This is '91, so he's coming in pretty hot. Oh yeah, he's top of his game. Um, and but I, I think that I think there's the two big influences on this movie. This is not original thought. Is it's it's Scorsese doing a Brian De Palma movie. In the style of Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, I could see all that. That's uh, that makes um, sense. And I think those two guys, even though about De Palma's his buddy, are like you know the same golden Hollywood or new Hollywood. Yeah. I think they're called new uh, Hollywood era. Yeah, new Hollywood era. Like there's clearly like like the shots of the face and someone in the back. That's just Brian De Palma. That's straight from a De Palma shot. Um. It's funny we mentioned parodies. The first things as a tween, like 12 or 13, we ever shot, me and my friends ever shot. I wish I still had this. I could almost remember it shot for shot. It's fucking hysterical to me that we did this and also really fucked up. Uh, I had a, we had a camera that filmed, I would say, like a, a, a picture, a digital picture camera that I would say probably filmed 
20 second clips and you you load a floppy disk into it i'm just kind of giving you how like old new tech it was like you could yeah like it had a screen kind of on the, in, one of those in between stages yeah. yeah like it had a screen on the back where you could see but it, awesome. you, but its memory card was a, just a fucking flop so anyway me and a friend i remember we were in basement we were starting to like film things and video edit like a little bit we made like a 30 second which i guess would be like a tiktok or vine these days sure yeah uh Kate fear parody where I was doing, we had a chin up bar in my basement. I was, I had been 13 or 12 doing chin up bars and on my scrawny body, I think we drew like a bad, like cross with like a Sharpie yeah. and then like maybe like dicks or something like that. <laughs> like something real, like, and then yeah. like, and then like going to my friend and just and it also for the, for anyone listening, uh, not understanding the scope and weight of like the, the like the rape and the sexual assaults of the movies, like thematics sure. at that age too much, like mimicking mostly in this parody, me just going, my friend stroking his cheek and saying like, I'll be the big bad wolf. But like, you know, what the fuck? I, I wish I had this somewhere. Yeah. yeah that relic that deserves to be seen for sure. What were we thinking? I, what were we thinking? good stuff honestly it's oh it's probably it's like i said two th- i think three of us 13 year old boy like boys and like probably the span of like 40 minutes being like haha this is gold going on our windows computer be like chopping it together we nailed we nailed this all and like, like a yeah. bad southern impression with my you know my voice through <laughs> puberty i'll be the big i think it was some it was I, I almost remember it shot for shot. It was all very. Where you are. Oh, that's a good one. Shot so dark, like you know, because those cameras, there's no like a light. Con- yeah, oh yeah. Like, like it, it, you know, probably the pixels are probably that big. Yeah. <laughs> or like, it looks like it was shot with a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I swear, it, my friend uploaded it up at the time <laughs> over to our YouTube channel, but I've, I have since looked for it. And he must have removed it at some point in fifty. In 17 years. <laughs> That's probably how long ago that was. Um, anyway. Uh, real quick. I'm going to run out some fun facts. Sure. Because I actually think this movie has a. It has some really. There's some really good like filmmaking shit that happened in knowledge. Um, that One of the creepiest scenes of the movie. The auditorium scene. Was actually supposed to be a chase scene. Um, but they rewrote it to be a, seduc- a seduction. The craziest stat, and this is where I'm like, wow, method acting sucks, and Robert De Niro, you're an insane person. Because remember, this is this is not a this is a this is a paid for hire studio movie. This should not be an awards. This is a it's an ele- this ain't art. This is an elevated B movie. Yeah. Um, De Niro paid a dentist five grand to make his teeth look su- su- uh, subtly bad for the role of Max Cady. After filming, he paid twenty grand then to have them fixed. Like he had a dentist chip his teeth essentially. To be like, make up. me look a little poorer. That's fucking ridiculous. Let's stop. Um, and then had him fixed. Like you're, you're a what are you a crazy person? Well, you're a goddamn yeah. crazy person. <laughs> um, all I got you was one. Like you're like fifth Oscar nomination at the time. Yeah. Uh, this movie also gained an Oscar uh, for Juliette Lewis, which I found kind of surprised. Not surprising. Uh, yeah, we can talk about that right now if you want to. Because sure. I got a weird, there's a weird thing going on with Julia Lewis's performance in sure. this movie. Yeah, you could bring that right up. I just thought it was odd because I was like, oh, like of all the things we're pulling. Well, like, first of all, the age and everything makes this feel Christmas vacation adjacent, which is weird. Yeah, um, she's supposed to be 16 and in Christmas vacation, she's about the same age. Yeah. But she was just a natural born killers. Yeah. Or like um, a year or two off. I, uh. But I, I understand they had to cast an older actress because of yes. some of the sexual elements. But her acting, her performance is like a little, it goes a little too far in the childlike direction. She's a little too like a girl. Like a little girly. too naive, a little, a little too childlike, girl. which makes her seem like maybe she's a little mentally uh, like oh, well, a there's handicap, also, handicap. Yeah, there's, there's a lot like of conversation little, of like her like being misbehaved in school and like kind of, so like. I never read it that way, but most of my notes 
towards the end of the note taking of this movie, you're just like, yeah. how fucking dumb are you? You're the <laughs> dumbest character on screen. Well, a lot of this, a lot of that, and we're going to get to it, but a lot of that will be laid at the feet of Nick Nolte. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm not like disagreeing with you on that. Uh, I just I, thought, I think it's very interesting that her performance got nominated for this. Yes. No, no, me too. I was like, huh. I, I didn't look who else was that year. Um, so the other, You're honestly like, sorry about, fucking robert de niro's thumb here here's an oscar nom for you oh uh, and you don't even watch that with his method acting uh, uh, the other thing i thought that was interesting and i actually don't think any of these guys would have uh, i think de niro's the perfect choice yeah uh but the the four guys that are listed i also think would have nailed this role uh nicholas cage i actually think would have been too young at this point to do this role uh, Willem Dafoe, Brad Dourif, uh, so that would have been so inspired. Come on, Brad Dourif is like a cheat code for this role. Like, and, that's uh, like too good. Well, the other name is a cheat code too, like Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Because yeah. he's also kind of doing a Shining, he's kind of doing a Jack Torrance-ish at some points. Bob, Bob, Robert De Niro is. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, those are like the facts. When I'm looking Bobby. through the facts, I was kind of like pulled. I thought they were somewhat interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then our little synopsis is, uh, when attorney Sam Bowden knowingly withholds evidence that would acquit violent sex offender Max Cady of rape charges, Max spends 14 years in prison, but after Max's release, knowing about Sam's de uh, descent, uh, he devotes his life to, to stalking and destroying Bowden's family. When practical attempts... To stop Max Fail, Sam realizes that he must act outside the law to protect his wife and daughter in Martin Scorsese's remake of the classic 1962 thriller. That's pretty accurate, except for that last yeah. line, I think. Well, also, um, it's funny that they get right to the heart of yeah, some of the stuff. That's such a big reveal in the movie. Yeah, yeah. But they also, they're like, flat out like, oh no, this and and the movie does it too. They're like, this evidence would have gotten him acquitted when it's like, should we talk about why that's bad? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, we should we should talk about why that's bad. Um so, they're just yeah. like that's just a they just state it like a fact, like, oh no, she would have gotten off, he would have gotten off because of this. It's, it's like it, I, I, like but it and then it's redeemed at the end though where Nick Nolte's like, that doesn't matter. I yeah, we can talk we can talk about it when we get there, but I do like the like the movie does take its opportunities to make sure you they know like you know where they land on it mm -hmm. they're just presenting the reality of the world at the time this movie came out and it just happens to suck <laughs> yeah it's not like a ooh the wall would have helped anyway uh so the movie starts off with uh and i actually i really like this movie i'm gonna give it criticism but i really i actually don't I don't like how it starts off with Juliet Lewis's VO. I don't think. I thought you were going to say, I don't like how it starts off with a title sequence. I was like, man, I do not miss this. <laughs> like, it's a long, long drawn out title sequence. And like, well, that's, with that's like, kind of part of it, right? It's not, it's, there's no need for it. We could go right into it. The movie, the movie does unfortunately have. And that's just in general. I don't even it. say it's not just this movie. Just in general. I'm like, I don't miss that about movies. I like the movies just kind of get into shit these yeah, days. Yeah, no, this it's like this would value from a. Like, I, I wish I wish De Niro took the same shotgun filmmaking he wanted from like Goodfellas, uh, where it's like we're gonna start off and just it, it never want to stop. Yeah. Um, for at least the start of this movie, because it is more of a slow burn, but we do it does plateau a little bit at a certain point. But I agree about the Julia Lewis voiceover too. It's it just never like, clicked with me. I'm like, yeah, yeah but we never return because we never really return to it. It's like, well, it's, it's like, only at the very, very end, literally the end of the movie. The it's end of the, the movie, the bookend with with voiceover, and it's just supposed to be like. So, in my mind, we're we're how it's supposed. We're watching this movie as her telling us her summer book report to her class. <laughs> yeah, and like, does she put in all the stuff about like Max Katie sending her the sex book and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> like, does she put the like the really like like intimate details of like him biting a woman's cheek off? 
Yeah, or like, what about the part with his parents, her parents' sex scene? Did she put that in there? Like, it's a, it, it to me, it just frames it as a, such a like, and to end it, I don't know. It's a, it's a choice. Uh, maybe yeah. that's something. Maybe that's something from the uh, remake, uh, from the original. Um. Um. But anyway, uh, I do like one thing. I do really like about it, though. We're talking about how it starts off that way. It does immediately get into like for the most part, that meet cute, uh, which is a weird way to phrase this, of, you know, here's Nick Nolte, here's Robert De Niro. It, you get yeah. there quick. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, you get to see, you know, you see um, Max in doing his Sarah Connor workout program. With all the tattoos, it's become iconic. It's so funny that there's a couple different times in this movie where the tattoos are framed in a way that you're supposed to be really shocked. And I'm like, that motherfucker just looks like Pete Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't age... Like, like even when um, I well the Robert Meacham who's in the original, he plays the original yeah. council. Uh, he plays the original Max Cady, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, he plays the like older attorney guy, and he goes, "I don't know whether to read them. I don't know whether to arrest them or read them." And it's like, there's not that many tattoos on. No, and also like even the tattoos themselves aren't even like there's no there's not even like big swastikas or anything really graphic. It's like pretty we it's just like some a bunch of weird sayings mostly yeah like, he's a religious nut like the movie really yeah. makes it known they uh, like they mentioned a couple different times that he's like a pentecostal from you know he's like a, he's supposed to be a hick he's supposed to be illiterate mm -hmm. but he's obviously country dumb like he's obviously playing under you know he lets people he's underestimate he's truly him. playing possum right he lets, well, uh, he lets people, he's like columbo you know he lets people underestimate him so he can get the best of them and, and that's well, that's where I, I mean, everything's explained out in the movie. That's where like Nick Nolte goes. Oh my God, he's you know well hiding the evidence or not presenting the evidence. I should say going. He was illiterate. No way he could have ever read that. Yeah, like it's it's always been known. Like I can get away. And then you find out that he learned to read in prison and became Which, his own and like became his own lawyer and had access yeah. got access to all the evidence. So yeah, that's what they talk about it in the uh, synopsis. But that's what. The, the inciting thing here is that um, Max Cady committed, and it's not even in question that he committed this rape and a battery of this 16-year-old girl. And I think maybe they even say she's 15 at one point. I, I think it was like 16, but 15, and then even Nick Nolte even says, and he bragged about two others to him. Right. At right. the time of the the trial, like the seventy, like late seventies, the idea is that like Nick Nolte knew this dude was a fucking scumbag, and he didn't give a shit. He wanted him to go to prison, and then some evidence came out that the girl who was raped and beaten was quote unquote promiscuous. That's all. That's all. Just promiscuous, have and that three, would be. Have... And they and, and Nick Nolte knew that would be enough to shatter the case because well, if a woman has sex with multiple partners, then she's asking to be raped and beaten. We all know yeah. that that's the it's, way the world works. It's. It's, it's it's a fucking wild omission in er, in the movie, uh, but once again, I, I like the movie draws the line to be like we don't think it's okay. Like no, I, no. Well, and that's the thing. And Nick Nolte clearly thinks it's bad because he goes against it and he you know doesn't present that. He buries that evidence, and Max goes to prison for fourteen years, which I thought was pretty optimistic for rapists. They don't well, even get that well, long. Well, they, then they you find out he killed his cellmate while he was in there, so he probably got a little extra time for yeah, that. Yeah, but they clarify that shit too. Yeah. Nick Nolte goes, "I got you on less charges." He goes, "I got you. I got you off for uh, just battery." That's true. You know, you did. You're doing. You did seven years under his watch, not. But then, uh, yeah, because he like killed his cellmate or something. He did end up doing fourteen or whatever, yeah, right? Something that that's such. There's such little like lines in that that are forgotten. Um, but uh, I mean, De Niro, he does. I mean, I do love the ham up of the Southern and the. The, the spewing out religious quotes and just being like, I like the way he dresses like Kramer. Oh, his, his outfits are his outfits are amazing. Awesome. So good. I Those love it. Fits, man. Well, there's a thing about it too, where like he dresses like a poor guy who thinks this is how rich people dress and buy shit are like with the red for with like the red Jaguar convertible and like the yeah, golf he hats. He got like, like an inheritance or something. He got out of prison and he, he had like, thirty he got grand. Like an so he has a little bit of money. Yeah, from um, because one of the, uh, uh, before I get here, like, uh, well, I'll get wherever. So one of my favorite parts of that too is like Nick Nolte immediately goes into, "I know I fucked up," instead of trying to like 
be smarter than the guy because he immediately goes when De Niro calls him out on it. He goes, "Well, I'll pay you." How does ten thousand dollars sound? He's yeah, like, like, and De Niro's like, I, "I don't need money, man." Like, I'm, also, like, what happened to deny? That, that's there's an unreal. You immediately that, that goes hampers, to. There's a, there's a problem with this movie, and it hampers my enjoyment of it, and that is mm. the fact that Nick Nolte is too stupid to be a a lawyer who's like been successful for this long. <laughs> He's so so dumb. He not only is like makes bad choices, like. I mean, the crux of the whole movie, so much of it could be solved if he was just honest with his family about who this guy was, mm-hmm. what he looked like, and what he had done. And he has no what is. It's not like the affair he's trying to have, or, you know. He's I not even say, having an affair. No, no I should say, like, I should say rephrase He's basically this. doing a work flirt at Let's right just now. say this. Let, let's rephrase that. Because all are, more things come out about that. But it's not like the emotional the emotional fair he's having where, okay, maybe, maybe I'm going to hide that a bit. As you just said, there's nothing that this guy's doing that he has to lie to his family about. No, he should, he never like both his family members have to meet this guy and then realize who he is. Why didn't you show him the, uh, them a picture of him? Why don't they know what he looks like? What he sounds like the car he drives. Like, he so shelters his family that he ends up putting them even even more harm's way. Well, it's it's like um, comparatively, right? Uh, it's like you know on that movie, The Gift, the Keanu Reeves one. No, with Jason Ta- Bateman Joel and one. Joel Edgerton. Yeah, and like you know, you know, Jason Bateman did something bad, and that's why he is not so transparent to his wife. But we don't know the whole movie of like what he actually and his friends did to Joel Edgerton to make him this weird guy who's coming back to stalk. Yeah. It's not like that concept where like, yeah, I want to hide this because I'm so ashamed of what I did. It's like you in the right mind were more, you were being more of a good guy by not presenting that evidence to the judge to get this guy locked away. You did the morally right thing. Yeah. And, like, you're a successful lawyer. We see your house. We see yeah. your wife. Um, but uh, I I want to know why. I'm a little pivoting a little bit here. I want to know why, and because it's a perfect choice, and how great, and I know The Simpsons, this is when the episode ruins it for me, the theater shot of watching Problem Child and Smoking Scar and laughing maniacally, it is perfect cinema seen so much in both Sideshow Bob's and the Simpsons in that in that episode. Oh, and there's actually, so many moments in this where like you can't help it if you like are a Simpsons person and that's what made me put my Troy McClure short yeah. shit on. It's just like I couldn't help but see the moments in my mind. That and the one from Seinfeld with Uncle Leo doing the play where he's doing the pull ups and Jerry Hello <laughs> Um but why problem child? You want to know what what was there? You know there was some thought there. It is still at the end of the day. It's more probably you know it probably is just what is this a Paramount movie? They it's probably, probably said it's these probably are the just movies. that that's the movie that Paramount had access. You know it was easy to use because yeah. they had the rights or whatever. And it's probably as simple as that. And Didn't matter what it was. You know you're probably more right. Like the family's just out seeing a goofy comedy of the time. Yeah. Um, love that scene, and also how comedically big his cigars are. And you might you might disagree with me with this. Um, uh, the, the the a lot of the, the letterbox reviews of this were like, oh my god, you know this movie's camp. This and that. I don't think this movie is anywhere near what people are like. It's camp or any performances no, no, are it's that way. More of like what you're it's talking just, about, like De Palma, like the kind of like hyper real drama. Yeah. Like, it's a, but it's fi- not. I wouldn't call it camp. No, no, that bothered me. As just like if I'm like, oh, it's it's not like, like De Niro. That's who you'd pull from camp. But he's giving a really good performance in the yeah. world of this movie. Um, I do yeah, he's like believable. He's scary. He's, he's like terrifying. Real, like I, I. It also made me laugh at this watch and putting down too of um, Jessica Lange's performance is. Every line, everything is. She's. Why is she always seductive? Everything. I wanted about to know her. what was going on with her uh, subconscious lipstick putting on. Like, yeah, that was a. It there's a weird like, like 
like they give Max Katie this weird kind of like hypnotic power over the women in Nick Nolte's life, but they I don't know if first, they do their enough first to meet, earn that. Like because their first meet, right? They meet once. Katie well, even and... before they meet, he's just lurking outside the house. Remember, she like wakes up and she puts on lipstick and she goes and looks out the window and he's like sitting on the wall. It's and it, then it, she they kind of run around and he's gone and then she realizes she has the lipstick on like she didn't remember putting oh, it on. Yeah, I maybe I'm just kind of like I could understand that if that happened after they had met, but it was before they met because I'm, that's immediately why it struck me. I I'm gonna try to connect dots here that might not exist. Sure. I never, I never saw that as a thing with Katie around. Um, it potentially that could just be how later in the movie we learn, you know, they did, he did have an affair at one point in this, and that could be her being like, you know, I, I slept with my, I, 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 I slept with my husband. Things are good. I, I want to make myself look, look nice and stuff for him, and it's just. I don't know something hypnotic I'm feeling about nice it. And feeling sexy, and then yeah, like, I, I, but and then the you know the the whole seeing Max Katie thing kind of breaks that for her or whatever. Yeah, well, that seems also more of like a stylistic. It's beautifully shot with the fireworks in the background. How are oh, they, yeah. How are they sleeping? There ain't yeah, no noise no machine shit. running. It's Those not, things like, are not only are they off. going off constantly, but like they're so close that like they're shining in the window. Because <laughs> with that that scene itself is like okay, they've had three. They've had maybe because fireworks don't go on for two hours straight, but like not what usually. Do they, what do they have? A th- what like a three minute sex uh, sesh? Fall immediately asleep, and then it's only been like fifteen minutes of firework. And then they wake up and the fireworks are still going, but it's only because it's only been like fifteen minutes. <laughs> but like, but like, you know, they probably they probably were intimate more than the couple minutes. And then it's also another of my favorite uh, movie tropes is sleeping right after sex. Of always, of like, oh, immediately. And it's like, you, you guys don't like hang out, be like, that was fun. No, uh, <laughs> I don't actually. I fall immediately asleep. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, sometimes I don't even have my pants pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I feel bad for everyone. <laughs> um,. You should um, feel bad for her for way more reasons than that. <laughs> no, I, I your, my podcast wife. I can't feel bad. I'm your podcast wife. I can't feel bad for you. Um, no, but we, um, but yeah, the, 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 this like first half of the movie, for first quarter of the movie, like a lot of that interesting stuff happens, right? They have their meet. Um, Nick Nolte does multiple times very much like, what do you want? Get away. You're good. Yeah. And he's very dismissive. Like, he doesn't want to go back to jail. He's this, you know, it'll be fine. The cops are like, we can't do anything about him. Uh, well, yeah, he does. We, we have that classic uh, horror thriller thing where, like, the pet mysteriously dies. Yeah, it's And it's so like, Max Katie's doing a lot of stuff to, like, kind of anti- And this is, again, falls into that thing of, like, I don't feel like Nick Nolte is... <sighs> There's two... He jumps too quickly to, like... Like, he doesn't... I, the movie doesn't give him enough t- time to like try more. He needs to try a few more like normal things before he just like flips out and pushes him at a parade or something. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, well, even the um, I like that parade scene a lot. I like it too. I just don't necessarily think they like. He goes from zero he didn't to a hundred. Like he had exhausted his options so much that he would be lashing out like that already. I guess is what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he needed to like. You need like yeah. You need like a scene right before there of. Of one more thing wrong in the house. Because really there's only been two things. The dog, which is a big yeah. thing. And, uh, you know, they keep mentioning that piano wire. Which yeah. does get a great payoff. But Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it... Yeah, I, I could see that, Brian. I, I could see that definitely... Yeah, I like, mean, it's not like a huge thing or anything. It's just one of those, like, I feel like it, it speaks to the problems i had with the nick nolte character which is like he doesn't he's supposed to be smart and successful but he doesn't feel he he feels like he doesn't think anything through he doesn't think like like max katie's constantly getting the one over on him and i'm like i i 
it just feels like the playing field should at least, I know that he's supposed to be underestimating Matt's Katie, but after like the f- second or third time, it's proven that you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should stop well, how, doing how do that. we want to, how do we, how do we want to, what scene do we want to include there that gets, gets him to that point? Like, yeah, what is I'm something sure. that, like, I don't know if you reorder the scenes that already exist to move some things around or if you have, if you need a new scene. To I get... think, I think a better way to do that would almost be to take the reordering and taking the Juliet Lewis stuff and putting it in a little earlier. Well, that would also give it more time to build. I, yeah. I thought that was cause I thought that was part of the problem. It felt a little rushed to the stuff with her. So if you did that, yeah, if you had like the seduction of Juliet Lewis a little earlier, especially like before they're wary that something's going on, like, mm-hmm. like if oh, she I have already new... had a pre-existing relationship with this new drama teacher, even before stuff like, starts breaking yeah, like, off, oh, I have and then he finds out on top of the dead dog stuff and all that, he finds out that the new drama teacher is also Max Cady and that, that kind of brings everything to a head. That would be cool. I like Cause that. Cause you could do an easy thing of like him in front of the school or something. And then, uh, Nick Nolte pick up and like, and her be like, Oh, like that's just my drama teacher. And yeah. like, you could, you don't have to see anything. You could just be like a wave of like hot counselor. Hot counselor. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I can get on board with that. Um, you know, cause because I'll say this, 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 uh, so you get there and, um, the, the rape, the rape scene of his, like, not mistress, mistress is probably one of the tougher c- yeah, scenes in all, movies to watch. First it's all, we love, I mean, I don't know about you, but I just look, I just fucking love Ileana Douglas. Oh, like, yeah. Anytime Ileana Douglas shows up in anything, she's got one of my, my favorite moments in you have you ever seen Kevin Bacon movie Stir of Echoes? I have not. It, it, there's she plays like the kind of like sort of psychic y friend or something of his wife friend or maybe mm. sister of his wife or whatever. And he's flipping out because he's seeing ghosts or whatever's going on in that movie. And he calls her and, and she comes over to or something and she's and he's trying to like talk to her and she's like, okay I smoked a joint like five seconds before you walked in the door and you are freaking me the fuck out right now. And it's just so funny because it's been so dramatic and he's like flat flipping out on her and telling her all this stuff. And she's just like, all right, I need to be straight with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to watch that. It, it's really, it's actually, it, it was like right around the hollow man, Kevin Bacon mm. kind of rebirth era that didn't last very long. You know, and they kind of went away again. Understood. No, she's always, it's, the, it's a uh, great the, little ghost story. I really like story. She's guess. always the delight when she pops up. And, uh, at this time too, like I'm looking at her, I'm looking at her shit, uh, her, her IMDb a little bit. Uh, Scorsese was using her a lot, so he definitely was. She, like, well, she's in Goodfellas, obviously. She has. That's where I know. Scene. That's where I. She's like know. Joe Pesci's girlfriend in Goodfellas. She's in Goodfellas, and she her second role is a crowd member in the Last Temptation of Christ. So, like, literally, first six movies between yeah. '87 and '91 are three of them are Scorsese, as in some capacity. So, but she's great. I remember from. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look honestly what I remember her from. Um, uh, that's all right. She just, I mean, yeah, just, she's always right. enjoyable. She also she's is on Seinfeld, much like the parodies we were talking about. Yeah, about. very recognizable. That's what, I, that's what I fucking know her from. She's in a great episode of Frasier. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, that's what I'm, uh, anyway, but her scene, that, that, that whole build up and scene, it is incredibly hard to watch it is film and i know that's the purpose of it like well, it's, it's like, you, cause like you're in that situation where you know what max is capable of and what he's probably going to do and you're watching her not take him seriously no she just keeps laughing because she's just like i'm getting drunk this cute this cute redneck guy is just gonna fuck me and, and they're and, and they're building that thing of like they're building in that so that she will feel later after the attack that she can't go to the police. They're building mm-hmm. in that kind of victim blamey vibe she does to it. And she well, does. Right. And she does. She like, after the attack, she's like, she knows that she was drunk. She went home with him. All that stuff is going to look bad. Like she was asking for it. It's yeah. another time where it's like the movie is pointing out, like we think the movie, we, the movie know this is not good, but it is the way the world works. And honestly, mm-hmm. still the way the world works. Yeah. So people are like, wow, and it's like he bit her cheek off. Like, yeah, like that's chunk, the most that's the most brutal. I was like, 
when he bit when he spit the chunk of her face out, I was like, everything oh my, else is gonna Jesus. Heal. Everything else is gonna heal at a certain point where she'll, yeah. you know, she'll and they have didn't show like a lot of graphic raping, which I appreciate. No, I that would have been too show much. Us, like the the rape is really graphic. I don't like that. I just meant like the beating and like. But yeah, the, every, be- like, the violence is very brutal, and that's what I. Its like, own right. Yeah. No, I don't think um, even at the end of the movie, it's like it's weird to say done tastefully, but like. So, done tastefully where like you could tell the filmmakers are not interested in that part of the story yeah um you know with the end of the movie in the in the boat with like jessica lang and and juliette lewis um like that's also not something it's it's all shot from afar you can't see much like yeah. uh which is worse like like that one and that the both of like when your imagination feels and that's probably I'm like wow that's it's so brutal. It's it's like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre getting like this is the most violent movie ever made. It's banned. It's like there's not one act of actual visual violence in it. Right. Yeah. Everything's kind of like off screen, off camera. Um. But no, you're no, you're something good. My, something moved in my periphery. I was, yeah, you're good. Like, a, like a cat. Yeah. This well, this is one of those you know really horror that. Well, spook, doesn't spook you when you talk about like some others we've talked, but I get it. Um, but yeah, uh, so this movie also does it. It, it features uh, Gregory Peck and Robert Meacham, the original Max Cady, and uh, was it Sam? Uh, yeah, I, well, Robert, but like to be fair, Gregory Peck is like basically doing Atticus Finch. Like he's, he just he's shows almost, up as a lawyer, like, almost dressed like him and everything. Like, so um, I'm gonna jump actually to right before that scene. When you're talking about uh, Nick Nolte being dumb, that is my least like like no one's this stupid scene of he high so all the time he's working with this like PI guy and this oh like, Joe Don his, Baker as a his, great scumbag PI. his scumbag and he's playing this role great drinking disgustingly Pepto Bismol milk mixed with Jim Beam um through the whole film but guy keeps going to him just hot he goes we could hire people. Honestly, for like nothing, he's like a grand. Three guys, who, you know, they'll break his legs. Basically, they'll never bother you again. Okay, I, I, I'm I'm on board. You know, I'm on board. This this also happens like what right after Juliet Lewis's uh, big bad wolf scene. Right. Yeah. You have you have Juliet Lewis gets up. You know the approach and. You know, it's it's a seduction we talked about, and he like puts his thumb in her mouth, and they make out. He makes out with her, and she mm-hmm. kind of like is hesitant but also intrigued he talks to her like a woman he's very she's very like adult and she's very innocent and naive so that like works on her of course yeah, and, the movie, and i have a note here too that's like it's not necessarily hard to turn a teen girl against her parents no and know? the movie's like what that way but also the movie consistently wants it is telling us oh she's um her, I mean, maybe I'm reading too, and it's like her parents suppress her sexuality, and this is why she's like this. But at the same time, Jessica Lang also immediately goes when she was like, "What? You don't think I know about?" I forget it was like blowjobs or something. And yeah. Jessica Lang goes, "I'm sorry, you know every like like they don't, but like that's the way she's playing it." Like, yeah, I because other than that, the seduction doesn't work if she doesn't have that like. Like just this man's giving her attention. That's that's it. That's all it is. Right, right. Um, but he, they have that. You know, they have that encounter. They talk about this play. She, she goes, "I'm smart. I know you're not the drama teacher. You're that guy." Well, also, your drama teacher probably wouldn't offer you a joint. And if this is a drama class, there'd probably be some other kids there. <laughs> so I mean, she doesn't. Have, she's not really a rocket son. <laughs> yeah, but um, so after that, though, <laughs> right? They find out. Brian's frozen right now, so I'm just going to talk through this. Sitting to him while he he tells her that her dad did him wrong, and maybe he's... But, like, I really feel like if you... Nick Millie just sat her down and was like, he raped and beat a girl your age. Honestly, she was even... your age. Here's Nick some Mil- pictures of her beaten in I was face. just going to say, like, Nick he could literally go to his courthouse, take any any criminal, doesn't matter, and be like, this is what he yeah. did. Lie. That's when I would lie. Like, this is essentially what he did. You don't need to see, like, it's fine. It, it, it's awful. Because, uh, like, Max Cady is a evil, evil, great movie oh, yeah. character. Um, 
uh, who does that. And then this is, they find out, right, this and that, because Juliet Lewis is an idiot. Uh, well, she tells him that he's, she saw him, but she doesn't tell him everything that happened. Yeah, but... She's still kind of keeping stuff from him and, like, kind of secretly corresponding with him and stuff. But she goes, um, he hires these, he goes, well, we're fine, we'll hire the guys, right? And nothing else has worked. So he's like, yeah, the law, I've, I've like, I'm, I've tried everything, we're gonna just get some dudes to beat the shit out of him, is what we're gonna do. Yeah. Tell him to leave town, or whatever. Um, because earlier, one thing we kind of skipped over, like, earlier in the movie, like, the cops, they, they pick him up for nothing, and they realize, like, wait, he's uh-huh. done nothing, and we're doing this? Like, you're... Well, right, they try to blame the dog death on him, but they have no evidence, no yeah. proof, they have nothing. It's, it's, it's truly like the cops so they go... bring, they kind of blow their shot on bringing him in, and now he's, a, you know, now he's hot, hip to he's it aware and stuff. For it. Um, he's also been aware that the PIs follow, I'm just, I'm just kind of recap of like things. They... Oh yeah. He makes the PI immediately. I love that too. He's like, again, it's that country dumb thing. The like, everybody underestimates Max. Everybody thinks Max is stupid. And just cause he wasn't educated doesn't make him stupid. You no. know, like. And he's real smart. Um. Scary the, smart. Dangerous scary smart. smart. <laughs> uh, but he picks a PI in the funniest way too. He orders him fucking lunch. He just orders him food. Uh, yeah, and then sends leaves. Him food. Uh, chomping one of those fat ass cigars and just was like, all right. Um, and so my least favorite part of the movie, it's, it's not that the guys are coming at him and trying to break his legs. And and it's like the three most unintimidating men you'd ever seen in your life. It's yeah. We got uh, two pipe. We got two pipes in a chain, right? Yeah. The weapons of choice are here. Yeah. Um, it's that Nick Nolte is watching it from like 20 feet away this. behind See, a dumpster. And this is why Nick Nolte, again, he sucked and he fucked what... it up for himself because like he can't help but be the tough guy. He wants to be, I mean, Tony Soprano didn't exist, but, and, and I, I, I know I've been watching a lot of Soprano's, but that's what he wants. He wants, he wants to, to like Soprano. sit back and watch his boys take out his problem but for him. You know what I mean? Like. It's, That's his whole vibe here. It's crazy, especially that, like, you know, De Niro is like, you know, he gets a few hits and then it comes back, just beat, like, straight up ruins these guys' lives for the rest of their lives. True, truly. I was, ta- I was saying that if this movie was made today, those, those are killing blows. A pipe to the head in a modern movie, your brains are coming out. Like, yeah, just, that's true. But they don't fuck around with that he, stuff anymore. They fuck around, they run away. And he's like, you know, he knows he's over there. He's yelling for his name. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, Nick Nolte, how are you that dumb? That's a, that's a, I'm home call. You wait yeah. for a phone call. It's done. Yeah, also, you want to be distance yourself from it. You want to not seem like it's related to this problem you've been having with him. Why? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it does lead to, once again, like you said, Max Fikati is, Smarter than everyone else, um, he finally gets a hold of the the hot shot like lawyer that will be help that will be able to help with this case. It's Gregory Peck doing his ask ask Finch, and he goes, "Wait a minute, sir, I have a conflict of interest." He called me I'm, yesterday morning. Yeah, hey, I already been hired by Max Cady. <laughs> Genius. And then you see him, and you know he's he's I mean he is beat he's up, but he's playing shit because he he's got his ass kicked. Playing it court. The case is thrown out and it's like you're lucky you're not the one being you know yeah on trial uh and then this is this basically escalates the movie to um uh, uh nick nolte and he, he uh sets a stand your ground trap basically he uses yeah. his family as bait to set a stand your ground trap with again joe don baker with the worst idea for an Terrible. alarm system even in a parody of this, I saw the little be- bear had a bell on it, at least. So when it moved, it made a noise. He's just sitting there staring at this bear that's supposedly tied to every window and door in the whole house. Because he could come in, he says, anywhere he comes in. But I, from what I can tell, he's got move. two strings tied to him. So the bear will move. Uh, you also, know. we know that Max has been freely in and out of the house at this point. Like, yeah. You know. And that's, and then once again, that's great. I, I think it's very, you know, I mean, it's Martin Scorsese. Like, that's where it shines. Like, 
it's great filmmaking and editing around. Like you have not had to show me that he's been at and out of the house. Yeah. You've, you've shown us with little things without actually seeing him. It's that to me is like great tension. And like, you know, the movie is, the movie is treating us, the audience as a smart audience and not just being like, Oh, the window was open one night. Like, it's the piano wire is really the only thing that's telling us. And like, um, but yeah, the reveal. So there's a housekeeper also, uh, as a kid and even today. Oh, scary the great reveal. The, the basically movie. dark night level reveal of Max Katie as the housekeeper is so good. It's ter- he's scary. He's a little, you know, he's like, I kind of knew like, I kind of knew, like, looking at the housekeeper that they were doing, I was like, why is she the same height and build and hair length as... Oh, that's a little too clever. (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, um, the the, the P.I., sorry, I'm blanking on on names always. Uh, I I don't remember his name, I just know that's the actress, Joe Don Baker. So Joe Don Baker, in the silliest way, is like, oh, just you there, uh, Esmeralda. Uh, and then it's just like a turnaround of a fucking De Niro in a wig of like, all right, and just yeah. gets his throat with that piano wire. And then, oh yeah, that's great. That's really good. Uh, then, this is also the moment where the we're getting into the finale of the movie, but this is also when the movie goes full comedy when they do the pratfall in the blood and him and oh. Jessica Lang are like slipping and sliding Ooh. around in a pool of blood. <laughs> it, 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 it's. It's so like, oh, oh, it's like, it's, it's legitimately silly. <laughs> yeah. There's, it, it, it's like too much blood and they're falling too much in the blood. And then they fucking run away. They just bail. I love it. They just leave a corpse in the middle of the room. Like nobody will have any questions about that. I'm sure you just blame no, it on that. And he, picks, and he picks up the fucking snub nose gun too and puts his hands on it. Like it's, it, if you're a lawyer, what are you, what are we doing? Because at that point, I'd be like, great, police, what do you want me to do? Put me in a safe house at this point. Put me in my yeah, family right? in a safe house at this point. Not take a car to the one of the New England Capes and get on a riverboat. Well, and also, like, you think Max Cady, he's been studying and following you. You think he doesn't know you about your houseboat? I mean, he we know we see that he rides underneath the car and everything. Tire- like, another. Even if he didn't. He probably knows you have a house. <laughs> He's gonna be there. Um, so that that's right. Like, and I I agree with you. That is very comedic of the fall falling of the blood. Oh, the fall of the blood was uh, from such a hilarious. from such a heavy horror scene, maybe the heaviest of the movie, in like a horror. Then yeah. to one of then the, I'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like uh, in a weird way, like it would have been better off if like. It was shot like the very bloody scene in Candyman where she, you know, she's like framed yeah. and it's, it's, it's brutal. It's not funny falling in blood. Uh, when Virginia Matson's all in that in the apartment. Uh, but no, it is. Um, but yeah, they, they're driving, they're driving up to, uh, you know, one of the New England Capes, Cape Fear. Uh, but we do get that. It is a terrifying reveal. Of uh, Katie is strapped underneath the car. Um, I can't tell if Brian is froze. Okay, what? he's awake. Oh, you're falling Sorry, asleep. No, I was couldn't. I couldn't. My thing was going. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, oh, this, this I'm is froze up. Oh no, you were good. Um, but yeah, he's strapped to the car. Uh, oh, generally love, scary. Again, ass all I could think of was Sideshow Bob and the Cactus Patch, and yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, there's. It's, it's, um, so there, they get, they get on their houseboat and, uh, you know, we're in the finale on the river and. And st- I thought that Juliet Lewis was over the thing now because we had seen the murdered housekeeper and stuff. At and she point. should be upset about it, but. Yeah, instead, but she still seems like it's kind of working on her to some cause, extent. Because the one thing, um, Brian, you briefly mentioned this is like. He told her, I'll leave you this book of, like, the sex play or, or whatever. Yeah. And he does, but she doesn't tell anyone. She hides it. 
it's while the house is all locked down for their yeah. big trap, but he's clearly been lurking around anyway. It's like not working and at all. And she keeps it to herself. Yeah, but she doesn't, yeah. Um, but that Before should be all wiped goes. away because they make it clear. They're like, oh, what? You know, um, Danny, she wouldn't, she, she takes flies outside. Like she's just this pacifist, naive little girl. Like, um, nope. But. So he gets on board, knocks out fucking the storms of Bruin. He uh, not like ties up Nick Nolte and then positions him in a place where he can see inside. What he's gonna he do. Like, in, like he's like helpless hole. to watch his, you know, watch what yeah, Katie's gonna do with his family. The big deal of this movie, Maxwell Katie, is you're gonna learn about loss. It's not just I want to murder your family. It's like you took them these years of my life from me. I, you know, I lost. That's now a, you're gonna lose. And it's yeah, it's a it's a terrifying concept, right? Someone mm-hmm. in your past comes back, and they're torturing. Uh, for something minor that you, or something inconsequential inconse- minor that you you think it is. Well, um, also, you got to mention that Nick Dolby probably hasn't thought about this in years. Max Hayes has been locked up. He hasn't thought about this. No, he's now had, it's all coming back to haunt him, and he's, he's like, probably you know, he hasn't hundreds, prepared for this in any way. Hundreds of cases, you know. Uh, but he he makes some he basically is, his plan is i'm going to rape and murder these two women in front of him and then i'm going to murder him uh and this is like back and forth the stuff's the, the the storm's going on um you know jessica lang puts herself out there more to save her daughter right she's um, basically looking to sacrifice herself for her daughter's I, sake I, I do love the line reading of de niro going though okay uh, I'm going to put you in the hole. You go in the hole now. And it's just like underneath the boat. But it's like yeah. prison talk of like, you go in the hole. Uh, Juliet Lewis kind of somewhat saves the day as she hides lighter fluid. And she know he was, she throws that she tries to throw the hot water on him too, but it doesn't like, I love the way he no sells the boiling water. Getting yeah. thrown on. And uh-huh. that's when he's like, that's the thing about like how he made himself more and pre his prison time to make himself more than human. Yeah, and like, like holding so the, he can take all this punishment when like the three dudes were beating him with the chains and mm-hmm. shit. Holding the road flare and that like ooze is on him. Yeah. And he's, like, burning shit is like oozing down his hand. And he's stuff. like talking about like his family lineage of like, they endured pains. And I think I, it, it's great. It's great. Crazy shit. Yeah. Good. Crazy guy stuff. Um, and he's, he's doing that. And you know, Nick Nolte's kind of, Nick Nolte of the whole thing, which I do love about this ending is he's incapacitated for the whole thing. He's really inconsequential to being yeah, the absolutely. savior of the it's, family. It's kind of up to Julia Lewis and, and Jessica Lang to like and, save him and themselves. And he gets lighter fluid and we get a pretty okay, especially at the time of like burning scene. And you're like, oh, okay, it's good. And they just gotta uh, yeah. like, they just gotta weather the storm. And I love how he comes back as this like demonic, almost Freddy Krueger. Yeah, he's burn a full on monster now. Like, and now he's like he's really transitioned into Frankenstein. A creature. He does look like his Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's reading those lines, and I love that actually shot. I do love of him looking back at the camera that it's supposed to be doing the like prosecutor, the, the yeah. like, like he's yeah. talking to the judge or whoever the yeah, Anna, jury. Yeah. yeah, and going, what did you do? Oh, and he's like, not you. This and just going back and forth. This is where but then, Nick Nolte standing up for what he did. I like too that he never buckles and is like, "I, you're right. You deserved a f- the same defense as everyone else." He's like, "No, you were fucked up, and mm-hmm. I did what I thought was morally correct, yeah. and sent you to fucking prison." Mm-hmm. And uh, really, the storm takes. And he him does out. really hit the nail too of like. It doesn't matter that she was promiscuous. She didn't deserve to be real. Like, no. it does not. And, like, he, they actually say the words, which I got to give the movie credit for that. Like, they actually come out and they make a point of saying that sentence. Like, it yeah. doesn't matter that she was promiscuous, promiscuous, which I was really appreciative of. The movie's m- social awareness ages very well. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, there is still some, like, stuff, like we talked about Liliana Douglas and some other stuff yeah. that feels victim blamey, but only because it's meant to portray the way the world is. Not no, that's, the movie. The no, movie's not the taking movie's that not, stand. That's what I mean. It's the movie. showing you the way of the world, that both, like, again, both then and now. And that's what, and that's what ages well, because you're just like, that's what the world yeah. is. The movie's not trying to paint a picture of what the world isn't, you know, that... This is a weird comparison. Yeah, that behavior would be weird in, like, Barbie or something. Sure, right? yeah, yeah, obviously. 
or another, yeah, honestly, probably even another fucking horror movie. Like, you know, that would be weird in Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Right. Uh, but here, it, it, I think it ages well. I don't think you could walk away and be like, "Oh, 1991, pretty rough stuff." Yeah, but it's like no, the movie, the movie's supposed to be rough stuff. Uh, it's supposed to be uncomfortable. Um, that's the horror. <laughs> um, but no, basically, the real savior and what happens is the storm. The storm is the. This boat takes more hits than the Titanic, man. This it takes what, a while to like bust river, the hull on this bad boy. And what They're river is into rocks left and right? <laughs> yeah, like what river is getting that? That when the swells. whole boat is like spinning around, I was like, "Where the hell are you?" Is it's, this the Amazon. It's, like? it's, it's thematic. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he has that. The women that like, are able to scurry away and they're like, we'll take our chances jumping into this crazy river and get into a, a shore patch. Respect. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, and, but Nick Nolte's still on there because they're tussling and there's this like, ha- there's a handcuff onto one of the things that basically you're going to be handcuffed and drown to death. Through the storm and the tussle and everything. Nick Nolte is actually able to get that onto De Niro's ankle. And, you know, they, but they still are like on this ship and things break apart on it. And just that yeah. piece is up there. It's again, all very cinematic. Nick Nolte is away. He also gets the shore and De Niro is now speaking in tongues, just drowning. Yeah, I love that they brought back the speaking in tongues thing for the, the whole, like, Pentecostal angle, like, as he's being drugged down by the boat. You well, know? That, that was my last uh, fun fact, which I didn't read at the top. I was saving for it is. So, um, it seems like he's talking in gibberish. I'm just reading almost word for word. It seems like he's talking in gibberish, but he's actually speaking in tongues, elated at the fact that he thinks he's ascending to heaven. So that's nice. that's supposed to be what his car he's he's finally seen his thing to come. Yeah. Um yeah. Um but and he then, failed his mission. Does he get to go to heaven? I don't know. Yeah, about I don't that. I don't know. I'm just reading a IMDB fun facts. So we're I'm really just gonna... I mean, I like I'm just telling Max, I, hey man, you might want to not get your hopes up. Yeah. <laughs> you could have took your thirty thousand dollars, lived a nice life. Uh but um yeah, I mean that that's for the most part the movie the family reconciles or uh, Juliet Lewis has that line of like we never spoke about what happened, kind of weird. Please talk about it. Yeah, you should talk through that, but that also is the way of like, the, you know, people that you're just like, nah, nah, it's over now. If we talk about it, then you bring it all that shit back up. But nah, just we're just going to stay it. married and and you're going to find a nice man who we're also not going to love at some point. And that's what you're, that's your life too. Right. Um, uh, but Brian, any, anything through this whole thing that like thoughts or things that pulled out that like, uh, we skipped over or didn't cover or that you really want to highlight or, you know, ending thoughts, I should say. Uh, you know, no, not really. Like, I think overall, like the thing that kept me from loving this movie is just kind of like the unnatural, some of the unnatural behaviors. I just feel like, Nick Nolte's character, you wouldn't have had to change the movie to make him smarter and more, like, more purposefully reactive. And, like, same thing with, like, I just feel like the way they they get away with some of the stuff with the way Katie gets to interact with the family only because they didn't do a very natural thing, which is that Nick Nolte would have told his family some shit at least the dude's name and what he looked like, if not his crimes, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I, like, I feel like it, it gets docked some points for that, but obviously, I mean, you know, this isn't, I don't think this was Scorsese's best directing. Like, I don't think it's as good as Goodfellas, obviously, even stylistically, but he does try some things. And like I said, without seeing the original, I have to believe there's a few touches he does specifically that like references back. to that. Sure. Like there's an interest. Like I, I think you talking to you about this, Definitely opened my eyes up to some of the criticisms like you have, which I find actually extremely fair and make me think. I've always really liked this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I think as far as like, um, he nails all the like thriller stuff, like 
Yeah, it's it, a good it's thriller. It's executed very well. And, it's like, good... obviously, performs has got the all-star cast. Like, none of that. My criticisms are all just in, like, the reason I couldn't connect with, no, the, I, I, with what the movie was doing. But, like, I, I yeah, I'm not trying to, like... I, no, no, it's, no. It's definitely a very effective thriller. Especially for the early 90s. I mean, it when you talk about it being, like, kind of a pitch perfect representation of a cable movie for dads. It's yeah, right. It's, there. Yeah. it's like more, and maybe I'm just comparing it. Like, I guess what my own dad had had on of those movies growing up. That's right where it comes from. Like, it's like right there at being a better movie, but just the same tone fun. Fun's a weird word for it, but like you could have it on features like something like hand that rocks the cradle. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Or, um, uh, What's the one with Jennifer Jason Lee? Oh, Single White Female. Single White Female. Kind Which of right that, in that, that kind yeah. of 90s thriller wheelhouse. Remember when we covered uh, Arlington Road? Something like that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, you know, I, I find that, I find maybe like it's more of like growing up, those are always those comforting movies. So one like this, I'm like, yeah, it's great. Like, I like talking about Letterboxd. You're like, of course I gave it four stars on Letterboxd. You know, uh, I do think it's an underrated Scorsese just in the sense that like it's a weak it's a weak Scorsese that's still like a weak Scorsese for the most part is still a is still a good to yeah. great movie for anyone else. Sure. Well, um, it also feels like kind of a flare up like it had its moment and but then it was kind of immediately forgotten and kind of cast. Yeah, no aside. one's no one's like and I think it's because. Scorsese went on to do more work that was on par with Goodfellas and like had he kept being more of if Goodfellas was when he peaked and everything else he did was more on this level which was like good but nothing like that really yeah, like caught he, your attention and he was just became more of like a workman maybe this would be more uh like, was like remember when he did this one? in his oeuvre or whatever but yeah, he just no, went that, he just breezed past this and went on making masterpieces I mean we could we could just real quick go you know like you have Casino uh, Age of Innocence, which is such a different departure, right? Um, Kundun, I think, is on in the nineties. Kundun, yeah, I liked right. It. But, but that's in the nineties, I believe, right? Yeah, come on. So. Uh, then he kind of goes back to horror thriller, which is, I mean, not horror, like thriller drama, which maybe something we revisit. It's a hard watch. Something like Bringing Out the Dead, right? It's just a... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's I just about a, Bringing Out the Dead. It's a frantic look of an ambulance driver, just, like, yeah. sleep-deprived and, like... It has paced. that last act of Goodfellas energy, like... Yeah, it's... Oh. It, but it's... It's... it's, it's uh, I, I haven't watched it in about 10 years or so, but that's one I don't one think I've seen it since the theater. I think I saw it in the theater, but I don't yeah. think I've seen it since. And that's one that's, like... Less of a, nor- a normal normal movie structure, more of like we're doing an exercise in uh, in anxiety. It's like yeah. uncut gems, pre uncut gems, right? Like that's that. Uh, it's frantic, you know. Yeah, and then and then we lead them right into the you know you're then then we're swooping right back of like I'm sure I've skipped over some Scorsese, but like okay. gangs gangs in New York, The Aviator. Uh, fucking. Was it you know. Hugo, right? Yeah. Oh, but well, then we go to the party. Then we go Hugo. Then he's like, that's when Shut- his daughter. Shutter is Island. Like, yeah. Then Shutter Island, which was another, uh, which was really the last kick of the studio. I do one movie, then I'll do yeah. a movie with the studio. I do another one. He did Hugo, um, because now I mean his daughter. We all see her on like TikTok and stuff. Sure. She's a little older. But when she was at that age, he, at as an old man, said, I want to make a movie that my kid could go see. But the only way I know how to make a movie be, is to make a movie about how great the magical world of movies is. And Hugo's great. Um, I've had, especially this year with Killers of the Father Moon uh, and my Scorsese nerdum, I've had plenty of rants about, oh, no, he's a really diverse filmography yeah. of, like, because, you know, people are like, it's the violence of these gang movies. Yeah, I'm people like, are like, oh, he makes his crime movies, and all he makes his mob movies. And, and I'm like, not, not, not really. Uh, I mean, if you say that about him, you have to say it about the Coen brothers, you know, yeah. like. Um, so, you know, having I've said all of that, Kate Fear is this weird little blip of, like, right after Goodfellas, uh, which should have been his first best director and best picture win and not fucking dances with wolves. Um, you know, ah, that's tough. 
I know Dance with Wolves isn't as well remembered. That's still a fucking masterpiece. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. It's, the, I, it's, I'm, it's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stand up for Dance with Wolves. It's the King's, it's the King's speech social network of the '90s. For me, it's Crouching Tiger and Gladiator. It's like, ah, yeah. Um, and that's all. The Oscars are, you know, they mean nothing. I mean, yeah. the, literally, someone saying Martin Scorsese has one Oscar and Billie Eilish has two. Like, we're we're on serious. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And the, the, and and dear readers or dear viewers, I know that's not to say that I necessarily even think that Dances with Wolves is better than Goodfellas. I'm just saying I wouldn't immediately discount that. No, I, couldn't I wasn't. Just, disc- I couldn't I, just blindly make that switch without some serious discussion, you know. And, I, and, and that is fair. Uh, I guess because I could keep ranting about just the the, the history, the, like the history and timeline of this. This is a close movie of what how Scorsese made movies to like when he made The Color of Money in the eighties. Mm-hmm. You know the Tom Cruise, Paul, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 to, uh... the the sequel to The Hustler. Yeah, more of more than not a hired gun who was just by sheer by uh, by sheer talent is able to elevate it a little more than just. You know your your typical thriller, but it's not perfect, and I think there's a lot of fat in this movie that could be trimmed down because it does. It's yeah, it doesn't go full two. It goes a full two hours, and you could definitely tighten it. It's like it. two fifteen, two ten. Yeah, like it's the length that sat with me today a little longer than I wanted to when I watched it. Um, but yeah, I I uh, I think. Everyone should include this in their, you know, great thrillers of the nineties. It uh it sits nicely with your Silence of the Lambs. And I like when well known directors depart from their not, their normal like the style they're known for. Like I said, we talked about people do think of Scorsese in this one way, and this mm-hmm. is a great kind of like something different that he yeah, did. I, and, I, and even just for that, I it's worth the watch. You know, yeah, I, I'd like uh, today, no, I don't want to see Martin Scorsese just because of how old he, his age, and we only have a movie or two left in him. I imagine I don't want to see him tackle another horror movie no. or thriller. I want it's him okay. to make the movies he wants to make. But if I were to look back, yeah, I would love to see one other like thriller that's of like a Shutter Island and Cape Fear sandwiched in this film yeah, yeah, at a certain in the, point in the late nineties, early two thousands. But or bringing out the dead would be the other closest thing, but uh, yeah, that's not te- that's not a terrible trilogy though. Like Cape Fear, bringing out the dead, Shutter Island, like nah, that's, that, good... that's an all right triple feature for Scorsese. Yeah, that's like that's like if we were to have a day like, oh, you're gonna have a Scorsese marathon. What are you? What are you guys gonna doing? do? Something weird? Yeah, like, what are you guys do doing? Like Scorsese marathon, let's do something weird with it. Yeah, you, you guys go. Oh, you're gonna do like Taxi Driver, and then like Goodfellas, and then Casino, or like or like, are you gonna throw in Wolf of Wall Street in there? Nah, we're doing bringing out the dead. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have a nice snack with Kundun. Yeah. <laughs> and then Cape and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash it all down with Cape Fear. I still I've been telling myself I, I got Netflix back. I'm gonna get around to watching the Irishman. I really need to watch the yeah, Irishman. I've I've uh I have the have the criterion mm-hmm. of uh Irishman and uh, last uh last temptation of Christ. Yeah. And uh, I've been also telling myself, like one day we're gonna sit down, we're gonna we're gonna watch the story of Jesus, That's right. told told through Martin Scorsese. Oh, another great movie of his that's just real diverse, Silence. Yeah, I've never seen Silence either. That's uh, I heard slow, that's very good. Quiet. It's very you know you can tell it's personal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I could honestly keep going about my. Of course, you my, love Marty. My Marty love. Um. But yeah, I I don't think anything in the movie itself. Uh, I don't have any other final thoughts of it. Like, you know, uh, I I also like that De Niro then replayed the same character over and over again in different lanes, just in less like like we covered the fan and flyover at one point. Yeah, which that's is true. he is kind of like this in the fan, which is just like the trashiest version of this. Uh, you know, there, there's others he did, um, especially later in like, like the 2000s when he was just yeah. po- post meet the parents. De Niro was just like, oh yeah, cash those page, checks, baby. Page, was check, it page. hide and seek? Hide and seek was a yes, particularly bad. That's what I want to revisit, not for this maybe purposes, but for like my own like, just for your own edification. Yeah, it'd be like ah man, because those trailers. I was at the right age where movie trailers scare the fuck out of you. 
Yeah. Uh, when Hide and Seek was being advertised, I was at that right age with the TV was, I was like 11 or 12 or something. The TV yeah. was always on, but the trailers were just creepy enough. And I was like, what the fuck's that movie? <laughs> uh, anyway. Stuff. Anyway. Um, but Brian. Uh, I think I think we've Cape feared it out. Uh, we can call this an episode. Absolutely. Call this an episode. All right, everyone. You know where to find us. We don't plug this shit anymore. It's it's here. It's there. It's you know everywhere. Where to find this shit. Stay frightful. Welcome to Flyover State of Fear. <laughs> <laughs>